live and we are live hello hello everybody welcome back it's another episode of venture maidens uh thank you all so much for being here for episode eight of campaign two of the venture maiden show podcast welcome if you're brand new hey uh we're D D fifth edition actual play podcast and stream set in a homebrew world called the plains uh which is currently being detailed written in the venture maidens campaign guide which is coming out so soon Oh my god, so soon, you guys. Wow. I can't believe how soon. January soon. That's so <laughs> fast. Um, so if you like what we do here, uh, you're gonna there's gonna be a whole book about it coming out soon. Uh but yeah, uh, uh we should also mention before we dive in, uh this is a very adult themed stream. Uh so you're gonna see lots of violence, lots of uh, you know, badassery of all kinds. Uh specifically also for tonight's episode, content warnings do include drug use, specifically narcotics. So if that is a trigger for you, this may not be the episode for you to watch. Uh, but with that, let's let's go ahead. Let's dive in. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Celeste Conowich, and tonight I will be your dungeon master. Hello, I'm Katie, and I'm going to be playing Luvirius Saf, your drow rogue. And I am Sage, and I am here to be your bard who is so ready <laughs> to so... get this bounty hunting job ready uh and you might notice that tonight nasim is not here with us uh for for good reason uh nasim is off doing fun things uh with her family but also in game you know we're gonna have a very special episode for next time focusing on on tony specifically and what she is doing during this time but yes it's just our two maidens tonight facing the dread that is this campaign uh will i survive I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if you donate enough subs and bits, they will. But we'll, we'll see. Maybe I will. No pressure. Uh, yeah, no pressure. No pressure. Please like us. Um, but yeah, before we can, you know, dive in to the new action, y'all got to tell me that just the two of you got to handle this sweet, sweet baby recap all on your own. What happened last time on Venture Maidens? Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> so we got caught up in an alley uh, where these little, I think, quicklings they were called, mm -hmm. uh, kind of accosted us and started ripping out our hair. Mm -hmm. um, and Lou may or may not have just been like, here, just take it, because she had no fucking clue and no frame of reference as to why anyone would want hair. Um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh they kind of disappeared and right in that moment uh the exact person that we were looking for it's not uh tandy. Some, tandy tandy thank you i was like tammy's not right tammy oh. <laughs> tammy <Close>. too <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. no tandy showed up and she's like uh are you guys okay out here <laughs> y'all you look a mess as like tony has been just like stabbed to shit in her mm -hmm. leg and everything mm -hmm. Um, we figured out who she was and we went back with her uh, to her little restaurant and bar area um, where we kind of got immersed in the culture of, of this place. Oh, yes. Uh, and we did. So Lou started bartending to help Tandy start talking to more people faster because they only had till a certain time before they had to meet up with Rook. Mm -hmm. um and just got to meet a bunch of people and experiment with all these like fey liquors and everything and, and had a grand old time uh tony was just hanging out with some rock bros um <laughs> <Yeah>. from marketing <laughs> from marketing <laughs> the crystal boys from marketing yep yeah oh so good uh, what uh do? yes yeah so uh Aoife was trying to find since there is uh, Tandy is not what you would say is is a individual is a dryad who is really into structure. Yeah, she's really more free form and loose, and kind of just lets the vibe take her where she needs to go because that's where she really needs to be. Is mm -hmm. where she needs to go, and that's the place to be. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I'm just feeling it out. Exactly. Uh, and so Aoife was like, well, maybe there's like a dusty copy of like a bartender's uh, recipe list for like standard drinks that you would expect people to order. 
And so she went around rooting for them, did not find that, but did notice something else very interesting as she was exploring the the back of house where she had seen an, an octopus, like a humanoid individual who was like head chef with all these pixie Sioux chefs, which was a delight. But the notable thing was she not- was she saw a portrait of Tandy and someone who, you know, looks a lot like Rook. Mm-hmm. Looks uh, with a bark skin just like Tandy. And was, there is a strong familial resemblance. And Eve was like, we're going to log that away for later. <laughs> Add some dirt. Okay. <laughs> and so uh, eventually wound back empty-handed and met back up with Lou and Tony who are serving serving drinks and then we ended up Tandy came back and said that she had a couple leads but we would need to meet them tomorrow for under the cu- under the counter bounty work and so we're like great cool thank you so much we'll see you tomorrow and she was like also um, those are hags that took your hair or had or who commissioned these quicklings to get your hair. Why maybe it was specifically you, you should probably figure that out because, well, that's a that's a quite a big problem to it's deal a with. Fucking nightmare. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and not sure about the underground races that are happening because that's not really my scene. Um, but if we want to hit her up for theater arts or like really cool cafes, yeah, drum circle, <laughs> drum she'll, circles, she'll, she knows theater shows, uh, <laughs> performance art of any mm-hmm. kind. Um, mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining the one woman scene from Rent with <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Maureen's just whole thing. Maureen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Milk, Diet Coke, who even knows? <laughs> Yeah. And oh goodness. And then we we met back up with Rem, gave Rem oh, Jesus Christ, Rem. We met back <laughs> up with Rook. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we crossed the wires. <laughs> <laughs> we met back up with Rook and gave her the lowdown and she was like, Well, great, I'm so happy that you're alive and that now I have this problem to deal with. And we're like, I'm sorry, you didn't tell us anything into how to be prepared. It's like, well, Ricky move. And I really held in the urge to say, Rook, Ricky move. Um, so on that yeah. note, I'm just wondering if we'll be able to haggle and get our hair back. What the fuck, ah! you guys? No, you can't gang up on me just because the seam's not here. So, this is our game now. Great. No, <laughs> no, let me off the we- bus. Um, <laughs> Great, we great recap. Nope, we're moving along. <laughs> great recap. That is where we are going to be picking up. Uh, so actually where we're really, really picking up is a little bit fast forward in time. So at the end of last episode, you had finished talking to Tandy. Tandy had basically told you like, hey, I can't help you right now, but I have some friends who used to be bounty hunters. They're going to be here tomorrow. So just come back like first thing in the morning. They'll help you out. Uh, and with that, you had had to leave. You met up with Rook. Uh, you had learned that that lovely bomb about, oh, no, hags having my hair. Bad, bad news. Uh, so with that, you had all walked out of Coven, uh, gone back to sleep at the chicken hut for the night. Uh, a little bit afraid now uh, of what some some hag out there has your hair and the implications of that. So the night had passed and the morning had rolled around. And as you all had been preparing to go to head back into Coven, a couple of different things had happened that have led you now to just Lou and Aoife standing right in front of the door about to walk into the witch's brew and meet these people. Uh, One, Rook had made something for you all. Uh, So right now, draped around your necks are these large satchels. Uh, They just look like burlap that's been tied off. Uh, with just a rough piece of rope. They're ugly, like extremely ugly and bulky, and they smell terrible. You don't know what's in them, but it's crunchy and soft in all the wrong ways, and it smells god-awful. But she had told you, do not take these off. Do not take these off until I deal with this hag problem, okay? And basically... 
Yeah. <laughs> and basically with that, she had gone off on her own to apparently deal with this issue, leaving you both with these things. Uh, she hadn't really answered any questions about it. Lou, I think with your nose, you can tell there are definitely a lot of herbs in there, plants of some kind, but there's something else to something that just escapes recognition even as you're smelling it i think it's probably definitely been more poop you. yeah more poop probably <laughs> it's just been bothering you all day like what is this smell <laughs> as you walked back into coven <laughs> and like, heading to the witch's brew so that was the first thing that had happened the second thing too that had happened is that tony upon waking up uh and you were all you know assembling getting ready to go tony had come out of her room and said basically that she wasn't feeling well. She didn't want to go into Coven. She was just going to stay back for the day. Uh, and she did not look good when she did this. One, in that fight, I mean, her, her leg basically got sliced off, which she reminds you aggressively about. And she was screaming about having to, like, walk in the rain in that, like, multicolored storm. And then she was also like, and I'm also on my period and I feel terrible. <laughs> and these are all things Nassim wanted me to say uh, <laughs> that Tony <laughs> specifically said to each and every one of you. Let's see. Yeah, uh, Tony's not feeling well, came down with a fever after the rainbow rain, uh, blue fucker sliced her leg last time, and she's on her period, so she's really playing up that, like, the PMS card, um, and, yep, yeah, so she just was a, a, a storm of bad vibes, uh, and then promptly turned around and locked herself <laughs> in, in her room. Woo! She needs a do not disturb under any circumstances sign mm -hmm. on that handle. <laughs> yeah. You have never seen Rook look so afraid uh, of Tony ever <laughs> after that, these, all of these declarations. So here you are, just the two of you now alone again, standing outside the witch's brew. It's about 9 a.m. or so uh, at this point. This The sky is beautiful it's like one of those perfect autumn days where it's just a little bit chilly but the sun is shining so bright and the sky and its blues and its weird purples and greens that you tend to see in in the wilds is, is up above people are strolling about um getting ready for the day heading into work and it looks like the witches brew in front of you the the windows are all curtained they're all closed i mean this is kind of like a bar restaurant so definitely not open to the public at this point mm -hmm. uh, Lou just kind of like has been grumpy all morning just <laughs> smelling this fucking dangly sack that she has to carry <laughs> around and, and she just immediately just walks up to the door and knocks on it mm -hmm. uh, and you hear some kind of footsteps from inside and a voice Hello? Tandy? Yeah, it, I'm Tandy. Who's this? It's the Marnie. The <laughs> it's Marnie and Sersha. <laughs> she like almost says the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> and um and you see one this this little glass panel uh, like one of those long tall windows beside the door a, a curtain gets scooched aside and you see Tandy you know, looks out at both of you and takes a little bit too long to recognize <laughs> you. And then she goes, oh, and, you know, you hear like a bolt undo and the door door opens. And she's like, oh, hey, you came back. Yeah, you, you said the next day. So it's the next day. So we're here. But oh, yeah. You know, but it's just. Yeah, my friends, uh, they should be here, like, really soon. So I'm glad you came back. Um, are you hungry? And you can already hear the sounds of, you know, people moving in the kitchen and prepping for the day. Uh, this front common room, you know, you see all those those tables that were grown out of the living wood of this living tree building are all nicely polished, but standing empty and ready, ready for customers. Uh... I mean, if, if they're not here yet, I uh, came prepared. I have lots of rocks, um, oh. so we can, we can trade. <laughs> right. Yeah, you were weird about that yesterday. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, what do you want? She kind of wanders behind the bar. 
Eva, what do you want? I mean, I've never had food from the Feywild before. Uh, Eva seems fine after yesterday, so I'll try today. Oh, oh my goodness. I saw the most spectacular chef. You should really talk to him. Uh, Lou, he was like an octopus and he had like a knife in every like tentacle arm. It was quite a sight. Tandy's like, what's an octopus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's like a weird sea creature and it's got this big bulbous head and weird horizontal eyes and it's got like suckers on its eight arms so it can reach out and grab things and wow. like pull them into its den. And it's got like, yeah. You should like write horror stories about stuff that's like freaky oh I, maybe i could be good at that i never considered <laughs> yeah okay well i'm gonna go i'm gonna get some food do you want anything she's kind of walking backwards anything yeah i'll just chef special whatever they want to make i'll eat okay yeah yeah and for you Ifa. I'm good. Oh, she makes sorry. breakfast. So. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh my word. Martini here makes <laughs> <laughs> We're all having <laughs> trouble. We're all having trouble with it. <laughs> this broad. <laughs> oh, hey, <this> guy. <laughs> <laughs> you, this person that I like so much, I can definitely remember what to call you. They, she makes a mean breakfast every morning, so I'm good. But what do your friends look like in case they show up? Oh, you'll know them. Um, and she she walks into the back somewhere. <laughs> Eva looks at Lewis like, what does that even mean? I don't know, but everything about Tandy is unsettling to my needs for rules <laughs> and scheduling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you and Brooke really have a lot in common. <laughs> I mean, I would have given us a map. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> reaches over and like pours a, a an early glass of wine. Yeah, there herself. you are. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. There's so many delightful cordials and wines to choose from. Why not have a nice aperitif to start the day? Um. Mm -hmm. So, are you you all like sitting at the bar? Do you take a table? Um, I think we'd take a table. Those tall stools are only comfortable for so long. Yeah, it's a true story. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you, uh, you know, you get your your whatever you're drinking uh, for the morning and and settle in. And just as you've taken your seats, you know, Tandy isn't back yet. Uh, the door opens, and there's a creak as somebody is kind of pushing it open gently, maybe checking if they should be knocking or something uh you see the face of a a wood elf so a brown skinned um very tall individual who's um looks like he has absolutely no extra fat on his body so very like drawn cheeks and kind of wrinkled skin which would indicate that this is a very old elf um with uh black hair down in in a ponytail kind of pokes around and looks and you see takes a long pull of a cigarette that he's holding in his mouth and kind of blows it out and considers are you the uh the bounty hunters we're supposed to meet uh that's us uh and you are oh um i'm erna salas uh do you sorry do you own this place can we come in this is Tandy's oh, place, yeah, right? Please. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, she she's getting food, so we're just kind of hanging tight. Mm. Uh, and he he steps in and opens up the door uh, for the person coming in behind him. Who you see is a very large, rotund human man uh, who is wearing this like bright, flashy blue like silk suit 
that was probably really nice once, um, but it's straining a little bit over his girth and has a couple of stains on it. Uh, and he, he comes in bustling through the door. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Ernie, your sweetheart. And pats the elven man on the back and moves in. And he holds up his hands and looks at you and goes, Well, what do we have here? Two young bounty hunters up in the world. <laughs> oh, he comes over and just sits down at your table. And he's like, oh, it's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure to meet you. I'm Bertram. I'm Bertram. Who are you? Who? Uh, tell me everything. And grabs your hands, Aoife. <laughs> Aoife. Oh, my God. She is absolutely delighted <laughs> with the capital D. And she is just all starry eyed. And she's like, oh, my name's Sersha. <laughs> At least Sersha. that's what you can call me. Uh, that's, that's, that a, that's a beautiful name. A beautiful name for a beautiful lass. <laughs> Oh, you tell a lie. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. And he slaps at your arm in a very jovial <laughs> way. We just like do this. Yeah. And already slap hands at each other, <laughs> you know, just with the movement and the exertion. Yeah, He's got this big smile on his face. His cheeks are bright red. And he's got these like twinkling blue eyes uh, that just shine. At, well, while he's looking at you and he turns to you and you, uh, my my dear, uh, from, from below the crust of the world, I find you here in fairyland <laughs> what a dream <laughs> Tr truly i'm marnie and she holds out her hand for a shake yeah and and he he shakes it and then kisses it and ah uh, oh, two you two bounty hunters mm. <laughs> so we're told <laughs> mm -hmm. and you see yeah we um that's like go ahead Oh no! And you see the the wood elf has kind of shadow pulled back from this boisterous man in the frontier, and he's moved over. Already in this time, he's put out the cigarette that he had and lit in a fresh one, and is reaching behind the counter, uh, pouring everybody some drinks. It looks like. Oh, so uh, uh, yeah. yes, please, <laughs> another mm. one. <laughs> mm. Um. Not so. What exactly were you needing us to track down for you? Oh, yes, 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 yes. You, you were interested in some work below the table, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> well, we can certainly help you. We can certainly <laughs> help you with that. You see, myself and Ernie, we used to be quite... <laughs> quite the bounty hunters in the day but then oh you know how it is it's just so much work and running around and we're here we're in the wild it's beautiful and you know our son he's really into crafts and uh, so, so it just seemed natural to go and get the, the, the get the store oh, and settle down. oh yeah you know are you single <laughs> oh well it just ha it turns out that I am, you know, you catch me at a rare time, and you know, I'm really into crafts. Oh, <laughs> you know what? You two, I so. you two would make a charming couple. You would make an absolutely charming couple, wouldn't they, Arnie? And he, he, he like, waves a hand <laughs> at the wood elf who just nods uh, placidly. <laughs> <laughs> and goes back over. And... Lou is just, like, looking between the two of them, just baffled. Like, <laughs> how did this happen? Eva's sitting there with her elbows on the table and her head, like, just squished between her hands, just, like, big heart eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, mm -hmm. you know, my dear, I will certainly arrange a, a, a meeting... <laughs> Uh, you know, a, a meat cute? Is that what they call it? That's what they call it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I digress. I digress. Oh, oh it's God. all I do these days. Digress. But anyway, <laughs> we used to be quite the bounty hunters back in our day. And, uh, you know, we still hear some threads every once in a while. Someone uh, wants us to do something. But, of course, we're too old for that. So we've got a lead for you. Some Something small, Tandy said, since you're just starting out. So uh, 
if you're interested, we can certainly share our information. No charge, of course. Uh, yeah, we'd be delighted. We're, we're really looking forward to getting our foot in there and just making a name for ourselves so later on we could take the big jobs. <laughs> You know what? I could tell right when I walked in here. Didn't I say, Ernie? Didn't I say they look like some go-getters? And Ernie just nods um, and <laughs> drinks from his his glass. Um, <clears throat> of course, of course. So word is that there's this this small time Sandman, right? That's just just pissed off a little too many people at this point. So. There's a pretty big bounty offering up for anyone who can find this person and just drop them off dead or alive at the at the coven prison. So should be pretty easy. Uh, no, nothing too, nothing too out there. Just a solo target. Um, sound interesting? Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, I mean, what what more do you have for us? Do you have a description? And Lou just like takes out her notepad and a, a pad and just starts getting ready looking at him <clears throat> description oh. usual things uh, yes there's um let me um uh, and bertram starts like fiddling in his two small pockets <laughs> trying to find where he put some notes uh and ernie will say it's an eldrin eldrin man pale blue skin goes by the name ripper uh, not a nice fellow, but also small time. So not someone who should give you too much trouble. Said he's a little bit too fond of his own supply. He seems to haunt a place uh, over in the Midnight Quarter, an old hotel. So you should find him there. If you're lucky, he'll be real slow when you get to him. You know what I mean? No. What if it taps her nose? <laughs> What's a Sandman and what does he supply? Like, oh, dreams. And, and yeah, Bertram's like, oh, oh, yes, you're new to, uh, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Sandman, um, uh, dust. Dust is sort of a, um, a drug it's something the 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 dream the sleeping court they 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 produce uh some of them naturally so when you inhale it you have dreams uh you know people who are just unhappy with their lives just it, it's a it's a taste of something else um so sandman are the ones who sell the dust so uh small time crooks it's not officially sanctioned obviously um Especially here in Coven, where they're ooh, very anti-court. So, so the dust trade, it's, um, it's a whole mess. <laughs> Aoife, not... like... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, he did, like, Aoife whispers with her, her mouth cup between her hands. Is it pixie dust? <laughs> like, looking around. <laughs> you know, that's funny that you think that, but no. It's not. <laughs> It's actually very interesting. The whole bit and mess. And Ernie puts his hand on Bertram's arm and just says very gently, they don't have time to listen to your stories right now, Bert. <laughs> and uh, Bertram Bless. goes, oh, yeah, you're right, 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 right. No. We'll get into it later when you meet our boy. And meet cute, our boy. We'll have you come by the store and we'll chat. And we'll chat a whole <laughs> bunch, but yeah, right. But, uh, Ernie said it's not the time. It's not for the time for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, to be clear, you don't think that we're gonna get involved with any court feuds because I signed a contract. Um, oh, we all and- signed the contract. No, 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 no. This is. Uh, it's only if you're doing violence on behalf of one of the courts. Okay. This. This cat, no, he's uh, he he works operates exclusively in Coven, so uh, you know, and you're turning him over to the Coven authority, so you don't have to worry about that. You know, you won't lose your earballs or eye <laughs> gloss or whatever the. It's whatever much more the... serious than that, oh, but I, oh. I get what you're saying. 
Right. <laughs> you know, I should tell people that's why I started balding. Fairy contract. You know, that's a good one. It's a good one. Actually, not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty smart. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, we hear he's in Coven now, so you probably want to move. And he looks over at Ernie, who's nodding at him. Like, you, you probably want to move quick on this one. Uh, yeah, criminals like this don't tend to stay in one place for very long. Like I said, head over to the Midnight Quarter. Uh, he haunts this this old hotel. It's turned into more of a, a dust lounge. So you should be able to find him there, no trouble. If anyone gives you trouble, you just push him to the side. That stuff can really mess you up. Okay. Well, thank you. We will handle this and meet you back here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll be here probably what? <laughs> I mean, we just got here. I'm hungry. So it'll be an hour, <laughs> two hours looking at Ernie. We'll be here a while. Well, in case in Wait. case we get delayed or anything, uh, where's your shop at? So in case we uh, end oh, up having to yes, drop by the there. Shop. You know, you can't miss it. It's just just on the other side of the square. Prime real estate. It's over it's over there. Um it's I didn't name it. What a fool. Um Sage, <laughs> oh, give no. me a horrible give me a horrible name for like a fabric slash craft and store. Imagine knit with knit being K N I T. Imagine knit. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm writing that down. <laughs> me too. <laughs> called imagine it that's their <laughs> store and you can see it just from the other side if you look out the windows um it's one of those total kitschy little like small town craft stores um that just an explosion of colors and signs and like this giant like rotating bobbin like at the mm -hmm. top on a spindle um, nice so you can't miss it we're in here all the time that's how i know tandy um where is Tandy, by the way? Did she, did she rope you into working here again instead of her? Because she does that sometimes. <laughs> I, I mean, it was my pleasure. I learned so much. Actually, before we go, I was waiting on that food that I've been thinking about for a long time. Maybe we can get it in a to-go box. <laughs> oh, I'll go find her. I'm sure she's like halfway across town by now. <laughs> Well, yeah, whenever you see her, just let her know we're waiting uh, for food, too. So that, that'll that be good. But yeah. Oh, uh, also that the hotel. Did I mention the name? It's um, it's uh, it was um, um, and he looks over Ernie. Dreamland. Dreamland. That was the name of it. Sort of on the nose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fairies. Like They've got no imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Eva is going to run to the back, going the way that she discovered yesterday, to see if she can find uh, Tandy. Oh yeah, I think you you eventually find that Tandy is outside, out back, actually where you saw her before, kind of in that alley space, mm -hmm. and she's talking to uh, a couple of pixies who maybe like taking their last smoke break before they go back to work. You know, so she's just chatting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's gonna head into the kitchen and see what if there's the the chef there and just like put if you know, put in an order for them for a couple of chef specials. Yeah, yeah. So you you go back there and you see this this creature uh, that you saw last night. So this this long they they do have two legs. So it is a bipedal creature. But their mm. entire torso does look like if you just put an octopus on top of like the top torso of a person and it's gone. Um and that's what the, so the arms are. So these two, you know, weird nice. eyes kind of look at you as you you step in and there's like a knife that hovers above a chopping board while you're taking <laughs> like saying your order. And a pixie will go, oh, he doesn't take orders, but I can give it to him. So just so you know, 
what did you want? And like whips a pad out uh, and like looks at this chef who is again holding this knife just hovering above this board. Mm -hmm. And she will do kind of a little half bow and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Didn't mean to offend. And then she'll turn to the pixie with, uh, I suppose uh, three of whatever they're willing to whip up for us, you know, got a couple of guests out front yeah okay sure 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 um yeah i'll get that right out just you should probably just yeah, she makes a little like, up and like scoopy hands yeah towards the door okay. and then Aoife's gonna wait uh like out kind of outside of the door and do one of those like oh i was totally walking casually towards you waiting for tandy to come back in because mm. she wants to ask tandy something oh yeah yeah and tandy will kind of see you and go oh and like waves and comes in is like oh shoot you know i totally forgot to um get and she looks at you just no no recollection <laughs> and she if it just waves her hand and she's uh wants to point at like the the painting of her and be like oh so that's so sweet is that like your uh daughter or something i haven't seen them <laughs> around coven at all no, no, I I don't have any kids. That seems like such a hassle. Um, no, that's my sister. And she kind of looks oh, sweet at it. Yeah, I've got five uh, siblings myself. So oh, wow, yeah, we had quite a few too, but we used to be close. Well. <laughs> That's sad. I'm sorry to bring up dredge up sad memories, but no, you know. I mean, that's the way of the world, right? People come, people go. That's true. I mean, you don't keep contact anymore? Oh, I don't know where she is. She just kind of one day um, vanished. And, you know, I tried to reach out and find her, but you know, she was always sort of like that, kind of hard to, I don't want to say, like, mean, but she just had a lot going on, and she was a very private person, and then, you know, she started doing, like, some really dangerous stuff, and then one day she just never came back, so... I'm sure she's still out there somewhere. I mean, she's way it too much of tough. a handful to die. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, if I ever happen to run into her, I'll tell her you say hi. Oh, that'd be great. Um, Yeah, just let her know I'm, you know, still here. She needs anything. Yeah, and she'll kind of nod and we'll uh, head, head back to the table with uh, Bert, Bertram and Ernie and Lou. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and very shortly, this this pixie comes back uh, bearing a bunch of a bunch of trays. They leave like this nice basket of like beautiful multicolored rainbow scones on the table mm -hmm. and like have a French press of something sparkly and purple uh, and then, yeah, there's there's like some some different spreads, jams, like fruits that you've never seen that you're maybe go like you put them on the toast or it's it's a beautiful little spread. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah. Luke like picks one of these scones up and like puts like every corner has a different kind of jam. Nice. And takes a deep breath and takes. The smallest, most delicate bite of this, and just waits to have her mind blown. Yeah, the flavor combinations are extraordinary. You, uh, you think maybe this corner was like a sweet potato basil sort of flavor combo going on, um, but it, it's not like close enough to either of those to be quite those. But it's reminiscent of it. It's just, it's so vibrant, and it feels like you're eating the raw food like but in a baked good it i mean how did they do it how did they do it lou just wipes <laughs> a tear 
This you is do, really good. You do My it compliments again. to the chef. Yeah, it's like another one is like a like a chili lemon thing, and you're just like, what? This is so great. Cardamom <laughs> and boysenberry. Yeah, you're just like all these like, of course they go together. <laughs> Flavor <laughs> is the experience of each of these scones. Oh god. I don't want to be a bounty hunter anymore. I just want to be an eater. <laughs> That's what I said, Bertram says, with like crumbs spilling out of his mouth. <laughs> Deeply relatable. <sighs> okay, so okay. What, are we can you, come back uh, what about you? Are you single? Do you need. We have friends. I mean, I'm sure Ernie, and he looks at Ernie, and Ernie shakes his head no. Um, oh, I'm sure Ernie has someone if you're looking for someone. Oh, I'm I'm okay. I recently got out of a relationship 10 oh, years ago, mm. so it's still fresh. Mm, yeah. I can't say we have that problem. Bert and I have been together for, I don't know, but feels like 100 years in a good way. In a good way. He looks at Ernie, who, <laughs> who just nods. Um I think that's beautiful. That's so nice to hear. Maybe one day that'll be me. And he he reaches out and puts a puts a hand, a crumb buttery hand on your hand and it's like, "Don't get there." Thanks. But emotions are disgusting. We should go. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh well, we'll we'll be we'll be here. Um and Ernie waves quietly. A pleasure. All right. All right. To the Midnight Quarter. <laughs> yes. So, uh, the Midnight Quarter, that is the bad part of town. Uh, you can very quickly assess. So, the Midnight Quarter is also that area where, um, where Tandy mentions, like, if there was any of that illegal underground mm. racing stuff, it would all be kind of happening in that area. So, you know to watch your back um, as you're heading into this place. And luckily, apparently, this this hotel, uh, it's no longer really in function, but it is a pretty large building, uh, so you should be able to find it pretty easily uh, once you do get over there. Oh, nice. Are you muted, Katie? Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I am. I always am. Um, <laughs> yes, eternally. Uh, on the way, uh, Lou's just going to be, like, disgusting, uh, disgusting, disgusting with Aoife, uh, like, what's what's our plan here uh do we ask for the goods do we mm. do we look around and scan to see if anybody appears shady or do you think <laughs> could the establishment be in on it would Getting they know who to, to direct us to <laughs> <laughs> would they know who to direct us to oh god bless you lou <laughs> what um, i'm planning no it's good it's, it's great <laughs> she's a sweet angel baby okay i don't know anything about the drugs <laughs> about, about what those kids are doing with the drugs you're hip you're young what's the tea <laughs> Um, let's see. Well, yeah, if, uh, oh, I do have identifier that might come in handy. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah. If I would say that. Yeah, that we're, we're looking, we're looking to score some dust and that we should, we heard that this, uh, Sandman. Oh God. What was his name? Ripper. Uh, it was Ripper. <laughs> This Ripper, that's name. right. The Sandman Ripper has the best, uh, the best shit. product. Mm -hmm. No, say shit, so they know that we're say shit. That, <laughs> that's hard. how they know you're hard. <laughs> you're hard. Um, <laughs> yes, we're looking to score the best shit, and we heard that Ripper has it. <laughs> uh, okay, and we'll say that to the front desk, or no. <laughs> no, we, we, we should ask around. I'm sure there will be plenty of people meandering about. <sighs> right, right. Okay. You know, I'm going to uh, follow your lead, but if you could consult with me, that would make me feel better. 
<laughs> it would make me feel decisions. more like a part of this team. <laughs> I, I am nervous. <laughs> I've oh, never. You'll, you'll be fine. Okay. Okay. You'll and be, she'll. Well, yeah, you're great. You see, you're totally good. I say, uh, do you have, do you have that heart on you that I gave you before? Hmm. Yeah. It's right here. I mean, I thought, I mean, of course I just threw it in my bag. It's whatever, but yeah, I keep it with me always. This? Yeah. 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 And she'll take her fingers and she'll give it a staunch flick and then they'll, we'll give you a bardic inspiration. (laughs) Oh, sweet. What, what's your bardic inspiration die right now? A D6. Oh boy. We're babies. Oh, babies. Um, yeah. All right. So you are <laughs> just you are discussing this as you are heading through. Sorry, I'm trying to pull up something real quick. Do, do, do. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, so as you are walking through the streets of Coven, and as you are getting closer and closer to the midnight quarter, um, quite literally everything gets darker. Like the sky starts to darken and these multicolored lamps, uh, you see that the pathway that you're now following is this trail of like deep purple that is leading you on and on towards this part of town. And as you're walking there, you start to notice that there are less people walking around. Um, There are less businesses in general. You see that most of the businesses are like boarded up uh the windows you know it's old flaking signs of places that have clearly closed down there's lots of trash in the streets um and it just feels colder because everything here in the wilds is very literal um so the environment is shaped by the activity and it's just a very unfriendly place you're walking into Don't stray too far, Aoife. I don't trust this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, it's trying real hard to like kind of stand up straight and look like she belongs. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> looking around, I mean, Lou's got just like a thug life. Uh, expression on yeah. her face and just resting trying... thug life yeah, yeah resting thug <laughs> life and I think honestly when she's not you know acting or like speaking like she probably blends in pretty well yeah having her deep purple skin and all the cuts all over her mm-hmm. and everything um so she's just trying to like kind of like overbear over Aoife so that she takes the most attention very like protect the baby mom vibes um, <laughs> and is looking out for um this this hotel dreamland to yeah. see if we can find any indicators yeah you you wind through the streets and Lou I mean you're you're being really vigilant you you know how rogue life works uh so every once in a while you'll make eye contact with somebody who's coming around a corner who or somebody who got a little bit too close and they scurry off uh recognizing that you recognize them and eventually you do make your way towards uh one of the taller buildings at the center of the midnight quarter here and at its heyday it was you know it it looks like maybe 15, 20 stories, which is huge for, I don't know if you all have ever seen a building that big, unless you've been to Phelan. Um, But it is, it is dilapidated. At one point, it was probably painted like this pale blue, almost sky color and had this, these like clouds painted on the side. Uh, But grime and age have just decayed the paint of this building. And the sign that read Dreamland has been broken. Uh, Half of it is gone. You don't know where it is. Uh, So you just say Dre. Uh, And then there's like a, a flickering D left on the very end. And as you come around the corner towards this entrance, uh, where you see just like piles of trash litter have accumulated around the front door, uh, there is a very tall, green-skinned humanoid that's leaning against 
these these front doors uh, with this like long greasy hair um, and this large snout. It like looks at you, considers you as you turn the corner, but it doesn't move. Uh, Lou just kind of like stands almost bodyguardish and like kind of like nudges Aoife and she's like, I don't know how to talk to people. You you better take this one. <laughs> Aoife will kind of like saunter up slowly and she'll be like, so we're looking for someone around here. Do you know anyone? Yeah. I know lots of people. <laughs> and you the, look like the, the breath kind of that comes does. out of the mouth of this creature is just... Uh, I don't know, have you have either of you ever seen a <laughs> troll in real life? This is a troll no, fuck that no. is standing in front of you. <laughs> yeah, so you see it now and you're up close to it oh, too. It's so like tall. long taloned like fingernails and this thing like lurches up. it is a large size creature extremely intimidating oh yeah if a big her little five foot mm-hmm. something it's just like yeah <laughs> looking way up <laughs> <laughs> well uh we're looking for someone by who goes by ripper yeah i might know someone named ripper What's it worth to you? Well, you know, we're looking to score some dust. So, you know, perhaps if you gave us a good intel, maybe there'll be a little bit in it for you. A little pinch off the top, as it were. I'm uh, not really interested in that, but hey... You guys hags? He looks at you. He's asking it the same way somebody might say, are you cops? (laughs) You legally have to tell me. You have to tell me. (laughs) And he's looking at you now with these beady, like, watery yellow eyes. She's, and she like rests her hands uh, or like her chin on her hands and she's like would I be this cute if I were <laughs> and he frowns at you showing all of his gnarled nasty teeth pay the fee and you can go in come on how much what is it what do you got and he kind of pushes your shoulder a little bit. <laughs> Lou like stands up straighter. And <laughs> like behind him like, oh no. <laughs> Do not touch. If uh, going to look at Lou. <laughs> <laughs> what do I got? And Lou's like thinking she's like, why did I only bring rocks? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> a little gold um, <laughs> yes. yeah um and she'll speak up from behind her and be like well i'm not sure what interests you more i do have some gold or i have this sandwich and she pulls out <laughs> <laughs> The most perfect layered like prosciutto goat cheese, uh, a Granny Smith apple sandwich with the perfect golden brown, like perfect cross section. Mm. I didn't know if we'd get hungry. You know what? I'm going to roll a a percentage die real real quick. (laughs) Roll for prosciutto. (laughs) (laughs) And the troll goes... I'll take the sandwich. Go in. Grabs it and smushes it as he grabs it, ruining all those good layers and just shoves the whole thing, the whole thing into his mouth and you see it grinding between these like disgusting teeth and the whole experience is bizarre and uncomfortable. But the troll nods and kind of shifts away from the two 
like broken doors that lead inside this this building. <laughs> Sorry, did I, I break you, Katie? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Katie is crying. Everyone on the podcast. <laughs> it's good goat cheese (laughs) (laughs) oh god she just is like all right (sighs) sersha move forward we need to get out of here this is a bad place bad place he clearly enjoyed it (laughs) yeah he's he's getting one of his big yellow nails but i don't want to talk about it right now yeah picking in between his teeth picking up some arugula yeah go 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 (laughs) spitting the green on the ground like what is that um so you walk in oh, through these doors. <laughs> Power walk mm-hmm. in there. All right. So you oh, walk yeah. into the lobby of Dreamland, which as you are looking around, yes, it was probably a hotel at some point. It might have even been nice, but large sections of the carpet now are just stained with some yellow fungus that you don't really know what's going on there is a front desk but certainly no one is sitting there behind it uh you can see most of the furniture that hasn't been bolted down is either gone or has been smashed and there is just a smell that fills this whole whole place it's it smells smoky and sweet uh as if maybe somebody has just filled this place with like too much air freshener to cover whatever it normally smells like. Um, and you can see that there are some stairs that are partially collapsed that lead upwards. Um, on one side, uh, there's also a series of hallways that lead back away from this lobby room. Um. I'm not turning back to ask him which way to go. So um, I say we just start from the bottom or do you think like top place is boss place? I feel like, I feel like head to the top. Okay. Cause it gets better to know what we're dealing with and know our way out. If okay. we have, yeah. I'll, I'll go first. Um, and I want to just be like, trying to move carefully because i know that this place is like falling apart i don't want to make like any big creaks as i'm moving as best i can Mm -hmm. yeah so you you know you pick your way up the the side of the stairs that is still (laughs) very climbable and head up to the the next floor of this place and you can see again this is like a yeah like a 10-story building so each floor has these stairs that lead upwards uh and you can see that there are rows of doors here uh it looks like maybe five or so for each level um so do you want to check out one of the doors or continue just going up just right up to the top sure okay yeah we'll start from the top and work our way down if need be (laughs) yeah so you you do you you climb up series of stairs after stairs and every once in a while from behind one of these doors you hear shifting or movement uh maybe some murmured conversation but nothing like fast nothing that's like truly alarming um but there are certainly people in these rooms And as you make your way up and up these stairs, um, you see that the stairs open up into this very, very large room at the top. So maybe it was like a ballroom or a conference room, something. Uh, And you can see that there are a lot of people. People draped sitting up against the walls. People kind of on the floor on these like soggy cushions that they've put around. Uh, you can see that there are people in rings, um, like looking at these these bowls that they have and like sprinkling this iridescent dust, like kind of throw it up into the air and then inhale. And there's a lot of these people in this space, maybe 20 or so, all various fairy creatures and other, you know, mortal species you recognize. 
But that's not the weirdest thing going on in this room. As you look up to the, the dark ceiling, because there are no lights, no lights have been turned on at all in this place. There is something moving on the walls and the ceiling. Creatures. They look like snakes, almost. Except they have these insectoid-like legs on either side uh, that they're using to cling to the walls. And these large fans on their head, uh, almost like, uh, like flippers. And these things are just crawling, just hung onto the walls. Um, like flies almost in this space and Lou I think as you like step up onto that final step you hear the shattering of something under your foot I look down what is it it's the ruins of what looks like a glass marble an empty glass marble is just shattered under your foot. <clears throat> a marble that looks very familiar to something you've seen before. Perhaps the one I found right after my very first dream. Indeed it does. And you see scattered about this space, there are a few of them. And some of the creatures on the walls are holding marbles just like that. <laughs> okay, but what does it mean? <laughs> Um, I, so looking around, I mean, I don't know what the hell these things are, but before I approach any of these people that are sitting around, do I see anyone matching that pale blue skinned Aladrin man that was described to us? Yeah. I mean, you're looking in the space. Nobody immediately kind of rings, rings that way to you, but some of the people who are closest to you, you can see maybe like the closest circle of people. It looks like, um this very large individual with like this bull face and two large horns so like a, a minotaur um that's sitting next to an eldrin who doesn't match that description um they have very like pale green skin and kind of a pinkish hair um also sitting there next to some kind of goblin they they kind of turn and look at you all and they do so with that just a dazed expression like they're barely noticing you're there and kind of swaying back and forth okay uh hello um can anybody tell me where i could get the hookup <laughs> and this um the minotaur looks at you like for dust yes for the dust I mean you can share if you want and like points down at this bowl in front of them all and you see again that that iridescent colored it looks yeah like sand like glittering mica sand in this bowl I think that we were actually hoping to get into distribution um, is there any way that you could tell us where we could find somebody who's in charge. Um, in charge. I don't really know. We're looking for Ripper. Oh, Ripper? <laughs> Lou just looks back like <gasps> the name. <laughs> yeah. No, he's here. I think he's downstairs. And they're they're looking off now, kind of looking up at the ceiling and around. I think on the floor below. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Enjoy your dreams. Thanks. And uh, the <laughs> smile passes <laughs> over the Minotaur's face as they just focus on something. You can't see. Well, they look like they're having a good time. <laughs> so Do Minotaur's dream of labyrinths. <laughs> oh, That's their nightmares, baby. <laughs> 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 and you know, as as you like are in this room, some of these creatures kind of scuttle around, uh, and one looks 
down curiously at you. They don't seem to be interfering with the people there or causing any kind of a trouble. They're just looking. And one turns its almost insectoid-like eyes towards you both. Makes a little <laughs> sound. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh god gross i don't like them <laughs> okay we're leaving we're okay, gonna bye. go to the bottom floor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they mentioned probably on the floor below so it would be like the ninth floor mm -hmm. um is where this minotaur i guess thinks that ripper is okay sure. <laughs> as good as lead as any yeah. On cloud nine, on floor nine. Let's go. There you go. All right. So on floor nine, you have five doors. That lead, I guess, into probably what you would assume to be the bedrooms that were in this place. So what's the plan? Um, I think Lou is going to just like gently test the knobs and see if any of them are just open first off. Yeah, um, so you would tell that the, the three on the end are open. Uh, the first two appear to be locked. Okay. Um, I guess we'll try the open ones first, right? And then, or are we looking for the things that nobody wants us to get to? Well, I feel like... Um... I feel like maybe the rooms are like empty rooms where people can go in and get high, but if it's a locked door, that's probably where someone is. So I feel like maybe just like knocking on the ones that are locked. <laughs> we don't knock here. Lou <laughs> is going to uh, just kind of uh, pull out, like open a little pocket that she hasn't yet opened up uh, with some thieves tools inside. And she's like, <clears throat> I all the time at home people are accidentally locking doors so <laughs> so i had to learn you know, how you to do to. this just so I, I you know it just takes one time when you can't get into your room when you need to <laughs> before you just pick up a new skill i'm just gonna... like shocked <laughs> <laughs> what why are you looking at me like that uh, i mean i use a card to get like I've picked the lock on my sister's diary and I'm not proud of it, but I mean, this is another level. I'm, I'm shocked. You have Liz. tools. <laughs> Listen, I am just thorough. You never know. And look, this one's great for picking stuff out of your teeth after a good meal. You know, multi-purpose. It's not that weird. I promise you. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, don't look at me. She's going to pick the lock. <laughs> Oh, yes, that is... Uh, yeah, Rogue, give me that sleight of that? hand. <laughs> 18 plus 5, so yeah. 23. Oh, yes, this lock just falls apart. It's, I, it, it, it was a joke. This lock is a joke to someone like you. <laughs> you cannot believe that anyone would trust a lock like this to keep anything secure. <laughs> rookies <laughs> uh yeah and with that um lou will kind of gently open the door and quietly push it open and see what's inside yeah uh and as you push open this door you see that there are two people standing in this room uh well one is kind of swaying uh and they both look like eldrin with pale blue skin identical actually and one of them says who are you what are you doing here oh the door was unlocked and uh, we're looking for someone named ripper we're um you know looking to purchase some dust and the other eldrin who didn't speak yet but looks identical to the first one says the door was locked. I locked the door. So what are you doing here? And the other one says, yeah. What are you doing here lying to me? Uh, <laughs> truth. 
be told we were just honestly trying to find where the stuff was to get a free fix so apparently we picked the right door uh and the other one (laughs) she like winks who wasn't the one who spoke is like yeah okay you can have some dust how much how much do you want and like goes over and kind of stumbles towards um you see like a cabinet on a back wall they're like trying to fumble with the lock um and the other one is just staring very intently watching your every move great uh so you're ripper then uh and this eldrin looks at the other one and says Maybe. <laughs> Lou just kind of gives side eye to Eva. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eva's <laughs> trying to figure out what to make of this situation. Um, but she's gonna... I feel like she's going to... Oh, man. What do we do in this situation? <laughs> What, what do, do we do? Do we situation? think they're twins? Do we think they're twins, or do we think they're like two halves of the same person? Or what are what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't know. I almost wonder if like one's a projection, sort of thing yeah. too. I mean, I don't think we're gonna know till we grab hands. <laughs> Ernie did say that they were getting high on their own supply, so I'm thinking it's the one who's like fumbling around but i mean if they look exactly the same better but just bag them both <laughs> bag them both be thorough um yeah Take I mean, roll just, roll just just stand, <laughs> standing in front of the the door um and while the one has the back turn um she will walk in like casually towards the other one like she's just going to be waiting for it and then um grab him by the shoulder and hold a knife up to his throat i'm sorry which Eva one are you doing this towards to? the one who the the one who was staring at us got you okay the one who's yeah the one who's like uh yeah keep it keep an eyes on everything yep all right yeah then Eva would definitely be like going with the other one who's like fumbling to open up the the the, the dust cabinet and would be like oh this is like playing with the hair like this is my first time like you'll have to show me how to do it (laughs) um so i will say in this moment um lou as as you both you you both make eye contact with each other and like you know do a divide and conquer uh maneuver here and lou you go and try to grab at Mm -hmm. the one who has been keeping watch here like lightning as if this person knew exactly what you were thinking they dip out of the way and your knife goes like swinging over their head as they step back into a defensive gesture automatically uh reacting to your thoughts is the best you can guess and let's go ahead and roll some initiative oh no oh no Uh. 18's in a row, Ooh. baby. 21. Oh, damn. Aoife got a 19. Wow, <gasps> you guys are fast. Oh, okay. Um, Aoife 19, 21 for Lou. Okay, cool. Uh, so, Lou, uh, this person that you were trying to grab, um, this, this, the watchful uh, ripper ducks under your grasp and totally evades your blow and you see a a knife comes out of somewhere uh and is in his hands uh but you have the the reaction move here you can see now that uh Aoife, the the one that is standing beside where you are where you move to um they're still kind of fumbling mm-hmm. with the cabinet and looks around and just goes hey what's going on <laughs> and that's like boom <laughs> lou <What>? your moment <laughs> great uh okay how big is this room is is you like within the, five feet of us or? yeah it's like the well n- probably not within five 
feet. Well, actually, yeah, probably with it's my feet. It's like a small hotel room, so motel six <laughs> room. Okay. Imagine that. Good to know for me, the rogue. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and she's going to uh take out an offhand weapon as well and go in on this guy, not going for anything like lethal, but like trying to like cut behind his knees and stuff like that to get him to mm-hmm. fall over. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Nice, nice, nice. Oh my god, I got a natural 20. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> We're uh, making up for it. the quicklings like, fight. Hardly... <laughs> I hardly Real? ever get natty 20s when I'm doing attacks. It fucking sucks. Um, Alright, so that's uh, 7 plus 3 is 10 plus my sneak attack. Back is one d six, so that's two d six. Oh, plus eleven more, twenty one damage. Holy oh, shit! Shit. So, um, damn. So yeah, as you like, you're ha- basically hamstringing this guy, right? Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're you're laying into him, and you see in this the in the spurt of blood. You know, you're not you're not hitting major arteries. You're very careful not to do that. Um, but as you are cutting into this person, this Eldrin, you see the visage drops for a moment, like in the wash of pain, whatever this thing was, you see gray rubbery skin and green eyes, um, that flashes before the face can reassert and the flesh can return back to that pale blue state as whatever you just attacked, um, it's struggling to maintain its form in the middle of all of this. Um, <laughs> Damn. Anything um, else? Yeah, I mean, yeah, seeing that she's going to go in for an offhand attack, mm-hmm. um, this time with the butt of her knife yeah. to instead just kind of knock out. Oh my fucking god, I shit you not, that's a 19. Whoa! What the uh, heck? Yes, queen! <laughs> right, this I mean, is gonna be it's so jealous. This fight when she comes That's back. two extra damage. Damn! Alright, was that total on that second one? It was just a two. It's just okay. a dagger offhand. Ow! Yeah, so again, just for good measure, you know, you're striking into the flesh of this person. And whatever they are, they are a lot tougher than you would guess. Looking at this kind of lean Eladrin or Eldrin who doesn't look like they've, you know, slept or eaten much at all in the last, like, ten years of their life. Um, But they still, still going. So whatever this is... It is not clearly not Chunky what boy. what is in front of you. Um, all right, and then that is going to bring us to Ifa. So I I don't think you see that flash that Lou did, like looking at its face <laughs> and dealing that kind of damage. Uh, but you can certainly tell now you are standing next to this this version of Ripper who is like totally blindsided by what's happening. You don't even need an insight check to know that this this guy has no idea what is going on right now. Yeah, definitely she, I mean, the the other one who uh, Lou had gone over to definitely seemed like the one in charge. So she's definitely feeling like we need to focus down on him and then we can just tie up this other guy. <laughs> and she is going to, oh, nice, uh, breakfast HP, breakfast temp HP. Um, She is going to, ooh, for the first time, he's a brand new spell. Woo! She is going to take out a little pin cushion and like little sewing needles are going to fly out of this like little like strawberry shaped pin cushion. Course, and I yeah. need, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, of course. Um, And I need both of them, both of our enemies here to make a charisma saving throw DC 13 as she is casting Bane. All right. That is a, all right. Yeah, that is a hot <laughs> five and hot eight. So that is terrible <laughs> that is terrible so whenever they make an attack roll or a saving throw they need to subtract 1d4 from their total ah no and uh. then she's going to take out her offhand dagger and she is going to like slide up towards uh towards Lou and it's got this guy and try and get a shot in at him all right go for it 
Quata. <laughs> that's not garbage. That's like an, that's eight. <laughs> yeah, and again with that lightning <laughs> reflex. Uh, and Lou, I think it's very alarming to see how fast this, it's like a matrix move as this individual just totally, not even looking at Aoife, just manages to avoid this strike. Anything else? Oof. That is her turn. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this ripper here is not happy uh, being baned and being stabbed. Uh, so Lou, uh, they're going to try and take some some good old vengeance out on you. Uh, minus a d4. Oh, That's boy. Fair. But that is still going to be a 22. Yup. Yeah. Um, so the knife drives into your side um, for 10 piercing damage uh, as this thing swings, oh, swings at you and catches you in the side with a strength that, again, clearly this Eldrin should not possess. Um, and they are going to come in again, uh, trying to bring up just a fist up and under and into your rib cage. Uh, that one, luckily, is going to miss. Uh, you see whatever your magic was, Aoife, like, like a pin kind of sticks in, you know, into their wrist. And you see it just goes limp at just the wrong time, uh, becoming a useless blow here. Um, and the the ripper on the far side of the room now by the cabin is like, Oh my God, stop. What is happening? Whoa, I'll get you. You can have whatever you want. I'll, any of the dust you want, just like go. And is cowering kind of in the corner. Um, You're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> we have no authority, but bitch, you under arrest. Uh, and then we <laughs> <I'm... laughs> Oh. You've seen this cop puppet show. Hey, she knows what I say. know how this works. <laughs> You're gonna be the lawyer's problem, punk. Uh, so, oh, so Lou, you just got stabbed for ten <laughs> points of damage, which I imagine is not a small amount at level two. No, but you know, breakfast is the most important meal mm. of the day, and I did mm -hmm. have that, so I'm looking a lot better than I would have. Yep. Eat your Wheaties, Luckily, kids. this is from the, um, the chef background that we've homebrewed for Lou. Grant's temp HP so far been super clutch. <laughs> we wouldn't be dead. Nice. And I think it's nice, too, uh, for a DM to be able to put beefier things on the table because we don't have, like, two HP. Yeah. <laughs> I would feel bad. Um, all right. So my first one after getting the wind knocked out of me was a natural one. That feels right. <laughs> she just kind of, <laughs> yeah, she I just kind of uh, the... just fumbles it. Yeah, I'm, I'm the... going to roll. I'm oh, going to spend oh. my inspiration. Ooh. Ooh. So that you can roll again. Okay. Ooh, hot, hot. Okay. 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 That is going to be a 15. 15 a 15 will nice. hit what what feature was that uh sage yes. that we, you were using oh i just had i had a, a point of inspiration ah yes cool. oh you're sharing are, are we yep you're allowed to share Thank that's you. awesome um oh, yeah all right so i will go ahead and four that's nine and then sneak attack is 13 14 15 uh as she just goes in and once again just wails on this thing uh nice. last minute uh as she kind of fumbled it first going in underneath and hitting it with the butt of her blade Ooh, yeah and you can see again you deal a huge blow to this thing but it still just isn't down and Aoife now that you are standing next to it and it takes this much damage, you see that that moment, that transition too. And I don't think this thing can maintain its form for any longer with so much damage. Uh, so the thing in front of you is humanoid shaped, about the same size as this Eldrin, but this, this completely gray muscled body that doesn't have a mouth. And it just has these kind of bulging green eyes with a, no hair on its body just these kind of pointed ears and that's the thing standing in front of you now crouching looking very very angry as it's bleeding this pale ichor Ooh. 
gross. That's worse than you seeing that guy eat that sandwich. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> all the horrors. <laughs> it's all horrible. Uh, and then my offhand attack, I just got an eight. So yeah. I'm so sure. Just it you have bardic inspiration. You want to spend it? Oh, still? How long does that last? Ten minutes. Yeah, you what? can have it. You got it when you went in the building. Okay. It was fast. You, you uh, climb stairs fast. 14. A 14 is exactly what you need to hit it. So go for it. Damn, Lou doing work. Oh my nice. God, I, love, I love bards. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's nice to have a bard. Before. All right. Another two points as she just uh, thwacks into it's maybe an abdomen. Yeah. it. I mean, it looks vaguely abdomen shaped. Uh, it, it is like a human maybe shape um yeah and you do you give it a good whack and you hear a crunch but this thing maybe it's the rubbery skin like you don't know but god it's still up and it still looks like it wants to fight and this this ripper in the corner has started crying full on crying <laughs> at this point oh poor baby and um that is going to bring us to Ifa um, yes, yeah, so she is going to take out her rapier and taking her cue from Lou here is going to also strive for non-lethal damage and we'll make that first attack. Oh god. Nice. That is a 16. A 16 will hit. Nice. All right. Do, do, do. That is going to be 8 damage. Okay. And then she'll go in with her offhand. Um, oh no, with her bonus action, she'll give Lou another bardic inspiration. She's like thumbs up with like her dagger in her hand and like, <laughs> yay! <laughs> <laughs> Good job, oh, partner, baby. We're gonna teach you how to use that dagger. Oh, don't sweet you worry, baby. <laughs> uh, that's that's it for her. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. And then, uh, so that is gonna bring us to our ripper that is in front of you uh who is just not gonna go down without a fight so here we go lou coming back for ya. okay but minus the d4 so a 17 that's oh. gonna hit. <laughs> i only have 14 for my ac uh so that's gonna be seven damage uh this is bludgeoning damage Oof. as you can see that even that knife was an illusion that was in its body right so it's now it's just punching you with these like overpowered fists um and it's coming in again shit that's a 20 on the die minus three oh, so no. 17 yep. oh all right that's only four four bludgeoning okay. damage okay, you still I'm with alive. us <laughs> i'm still holding on yeah and this thing is mercilessly coming for you you have pissed it off and it is just it is going with a fury that is not human not humanoid it's it's scary um lou we come to you rocket unrolling at this point we lost a lot of blood yeah yeah she's just like her nose is just like a waterfall of blood just getting into her mouth and she just like Oof. staggers back and gets a natural 20. Holy I'm on fire! fire. Uh, so I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say you whatever oh. you roll you're gonna fucking slay so what is the like what is your move here to take out this thing? Yeah <laughs> I think the, the last time that it punches into her she kind of like keels over uh, and instead of like fully trying to stand back up she just grabs on to her biggest knife with both hands and thrusts the butt of this thing straight into the center of it. Yeah. And you do, and you hear, yeah, just a, like a, a crunching sound and all the breath comes out of this thing. And finally, finally, it collapses on the ground in front of you. And yeah, now that you're looking at it, just, yeah, this gray featureless thing curled up on the ground, it seems so monstrous as you're looking at it and the the ripper in the corner is like listen i don't uh, like that guy is i he just you know he i'm not whoever you're looking for man it's that guy 
you're under arrest, I think. And Wait, Lou just like no, weakly why? like pulls out ropes. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> spewing up blood. Yeah. <laughs> like coughs up blood. <laughs> Evil will reach out with the cure wounds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, and I think that Lou just, like, grabs this guy and she's like, sorry, I don't want to be rough and just, like, ties him up and is like, how are we going to move that thing? What are we? Oh, we got to bring it. That's going to be, like, extra. How does this work? What are we doing? Eva's going to cure you for 10 and then she's going to say (laughs) well I think they probably want this guy as she points to the one who's crying in the corner and is like making moves with 50 feet of rope to like tie him up (laughs) but if this guy's a fae maybe we can bring him to Rook and maybe she can sell him like that tachinid that thing was dead this thing so oh, was this oh. thing oh he's not oh, dead he's oh. unconscious <laughs> well we can tie him up in it if he's tied up we will, we can still so, kill him i think i guess <laughs> i think the fun <laughs> of this episode is here we are in this like drug den and you've got two people and you're like oh no now the part of bounty hunting where we have to get two people back to the <laughs> thing and so here we are you've done it mm-hmm. you've succeeded it's the hard part uh so you have successfully completed your first bounty well done uh, that is the end, I think, of the action for this episode. So that is a problem that will be solved um, in between this episode and next. God. <laughs> oh my God! You did it, though. You did it. You got. You got the guy. Congrats, or guys? Oh, we're nice. incredible. Who knows? Who knows? We got the guy. You've got a date, which I guess you could just turn your back on right? Charlie whenever you want. Yeah, now, I so guess that's you know cool. you've got you've got a meet cute <laughs> planned. You've met two very nice gay gentlemen who are just like so happy to help, and you know it's all gonna be okay. Uh, but before <laughs> we go anywhere, before we do outros or anything, we of course have to do our uh, our letter that we have uh so uh now that you all live in the chicken hut um for whatever reason mail just gets slid under your door you're not really sure how it gets there or what is going on but this is a letter that Eva has received um so Eva, the letter that came sliding under the door i think maybe even this morning before you left would you care to read it Mm -hmm. for us Oh, definitely. <clears throat> Dear Stefa, I thought it was high time the family all got together to write you a little dispatch. So I've done my best to collect status reports on all 100 of us for you. Your grandmother and I fought over who would actually get to write this main act of the letter, but you know her. She's a big softy when it comes down to it. Just one little smile from the silly old goat and she's all coffee cake and sunshine. Let's see, here's the rundown. Oshin seems to have learned three or four more instruments since you left. They say they're writing a song about you, but I haven't got I haven't been allowed to hear it yet. A complete perfectionist through and through, just like your mother. I promise to write back when it's finished, and I can warn you whether you should laugh or cry when you hear it. Fairy forbid we act inappropriately upon hearing a teenage creation. You know how it is. Sersha has really come into her own these days. She wore that dress you made her down to the threads and Gran is helping her make a few more. She may not have the patience you do for all those itty bitty knots, but the girl has vision. I started telling Gran we need to save more money because the day she wants to head off to study art and failing is coming. I can feel it in my hooves. The twins are well. They are boys. Breaking every little thing in this poor house. If your grand didn't know a little magic, the whole cottage would have been smithereens, shoestrings by now. I think they're coming out of the worst of it, though. Thank goodness. There's this cute little half girl from school who keeps coming by to visit, and every time she stops by, they behave like perfect angels, of course. Ashlyn is well, is also well. 
But Aoife, she is shy. My goodness, I had no idea anyone in this family could be shy and quiet of all things. When I asked her for a status report, she gasped and ran to her room and brought back a drawing for you. And there is a drawing of a very fat dragon wearing a big crochet scarf and clothes <laughs> in the envelope. <laughs> I heard your parent from your parents recently, and they are just so proud of you, taking on the world the way you are. Your mother wanted me to mention that the troop will be stopping in Ashtar very soon, so if you ever get some time away, they'd love to see you. Apparently, the street food, street food on the plateau is just extraordinary. Well, that's everybody. I won't hold you too much longer since you've got big dreams to get to. We all love you so much and can't wait to hear all about your adventures. Loves and kisses, pop pop. Oh, wow, I can't believe you read that whole oh. thing in that accent. That's amazing. <laughs> You're a legend. Hire shook. me for voice acting. <laughs> I am shook. <laughs> so that was a little a little letter from uh, Eva's many siblings and grandpa. Um, so with that, that is actually the end of the episode. Uh, so thank you all so much for being here. I have been your dungeon master, Celeste Cottowich. And I am Katie playing the very Seth, your drow rogue. And I am Sage and I've been your feckin' I almost said barbarian. Holy shit. Nope. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Barbarian. Oh, no. Bard. Bard. <laughs> Bard buried. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I am pleased to say you all have leveled up. Congratulations. You did it. You are now level three. Awesome. You have earned it. You did your first bounty. You've met so many people. You've been thrown into a world that's just so full of rules and nonsense. Uh, <gasps> so you will be level three next time we play these characters. But I will say we have a very special episode planned for you all. So when we come back in two weeks, it is going to be an episode exploring what Tony has been doing during this time. Because, oh, yes, she did definitely lie about being sick. Uh, But Sage and Katie will be there playing some helpers along the way. So it is going to be... (laughs) A good time, a wild time, a fey wild time, one might say. Um, So make sure Mm -hmm. to be here (laughs) in two weeks for that. (laughs) And of course, next week, you can catch us with, uh, we have our first Venture Maidens Legacy game, like the official Legacy game with the whole crew uh, is happening next week, Wednesday. So that means Brittany will be coming back. Uh, We will be playing our Campaign 1 characters for our first game of all the crew together after the end of campaign one so that is going to be ridiculous i'm sure so please please do come join us next week um as we see the whole crew back together in action and learn what what the hell's been going on these past you know 10 years what what's been going on we'll (laughs) we'll we'll see it's gonna be so fun to play level 18 characters right swinging between two and 18 imminent death and then like being like gods amazing amazing Um, two from the bottom two from the top yep there's a nice symmetry to that (laughs) yes we are getting the band back together (laughs) yeah we're getting the band back together this is our first legacy game we're planning to have these types of uh legacy games regularly uh so this is the the first of those maybe twice a year uh or so so this will be good. This will be fun uh, to revisit. So definitely lots of campaign one spoilers. So just just so you all know, in case there are new folks there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, make sure to come back in two weeks for episode nine of Venture Maidens. And in the meantime, um, Sage, why don't you remind the folks what happens here monthly on Mondays? Ooh, yes. So coming up just uh, not this next Monday, but the following one on November 1st will be our second ever uh, or our second ever episode of a Theros campaign that I have just started, um, which is very exciting. It's uh, for the first episode. If you haven't seen it, it is available to watch on the Mind Sculptors YouTube channel. 
And I believe now I will have to find a link for you all, but also as a podcast, which, which will be nice and consumable for you. Um, but yes, I'm very excited collaborating with folks in the MTG community who I am also dearly a part of. And we play a wonderful Theros campaign where we are facing a plague that has taken the city of Miletus and they must figure out the source of it. Yeah, and that is six thirty first Monday of every month. Um, here on our channel. Heck yes, and of course, before we go, we have to thank the incredible Patreon donors who make this show possible. Uh, so we want to thank all of our our Patreon donors uh, who donate at the Arnie's co cohort level or the Ferris drinking mate, so our twenty five dollar and up level. So thank you so much, Cody Becker at Cody Rolls Four on Twitter. Oh, I'm you're... muted. Oh, thank you're... you so much, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much to Curry, who is also one of the fantastic moderators on our Venture Maidens Discord. <gasps> thank you so much, Curry. Um, and of course, thank you to Muffin at the one on Drury Lane on Twitter. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to Nisa McKinnon. Nissa. Nis Nissa or Nisa? I thought it was. It's, it's a short I, like Miss. Mm. Miss Nissa. Nissa. Okay. Nissa McKinnon. Say, you can, you can edit that. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> and Richie113 on Discord. And to our new Ferris drinking mate, Chris Ott, aka Targo. Thank you very much, friend. Uh, you all freaking rock. You all freaking rock. Um, a couple more quick things. Hey, uh, stay tuned on social media. I just announced Rewards and Rarities is going to be coming to Kickstarter November 4th. Um, it's the second like large project that I have been the lead writer and designer on uh, for 2C Gaming. So that is coming soon. Uh, it's a complete guide to adventuring awards. The spiritual successor to the Arms and Equipment Guide from 3.5 talking all about how to price treasure, how to make treasure actually fun in your games, useful in your games, magical rewards you can give people, lands, titles, servants, a ton of awesome rewards uh, that you can give your players, how to do that, pricing, as well as a shitload of new magic items uh, that are also coming from a fabulous team of designers. So keep your eyes out for rewards and rarities. And also, Awesome, excellent news. Uh, we have a new show that has joined the Penwich Studio Network, which is our <laughs> podcast network. Uh, so we are welcoming Death to Divinity, which is the first all fat, all queer D&D actual play show. Uh, so we are so, so proud to have them. So you should absolutely check out their stuff. They also stream like us and then convert to a podcast. So if you love this like live play stuff, you got to check out Death to divinity two is not spelled t-o it is spelled like the number two all one word so check out death to divinity um good shit we are so so thrilled to have them and uh you will mm -hmm. hear more about that big fan yeah uh, an amazing show Most amazing so. cast amazing people so uh they have just come on to our podcast network so we are thrilled uh to be working with them professionally in that capacity so that's it i think that's all the business so much good business and news. <laughs> so much good business. I know. Uh, it, well, you all rock. You all fucking rock our world. Um, so until next time, everybody. Venture away. away. Venture away, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys.